Welcome back to I Am Athlete tonight. I am your host, Lee J. Doosable, and I'm with my guy, Jermaine Johnson from Florida State defensive end, taken in the first round by the New York Jets. My New York Jets, I played for Robert Sala. Couldn't be more excited. I had this guy going at pick number four or 10, and the Jets were able to trade back into the first round and get him at 26. Speaking of that, Jermaine, and I want you to just be honest with me, man. When you're sitting in that room, right, and you yeah. probably heard all the mock drafts, guys had you going as a top 10 pick, guys and talent evaluators had you as a top 10 prospect, and then your name starts to slip. You see three other defensive ends go before you. Like, what is going through your head? Like, honestly, what is the first thing that came to your mind? Uh, for sure. Uh, it got to be, um, first off, I'm a man of faith, man. So I knew I was going to be where I'm supposed to be at anyway. God always got my back. He always does. Um, but at the same time, I felt a little bit disrespect. Um, but it's all good. I just know they're going to feel me, for sure. Mm. Every team, every team they're going to feel me. So, yeah, you talked about that. You, they, you felt a little disrespected, right? It, so so what what was it? What do you think it was? And I know it really doesn't matter because you're a Jet now, but what, is, what do you think it was that, that made teams, quote unquote, pass on you and, and you slipped to tw the 26th spot? You know, that's, that's none of my concern, man. And what is my concern is, um, you know, making sure, making sure they know they, they messed up on game day. Yeah. So we, we talked about those, those three other guys that went before you and you said they're going to feel you, but, but exact, like, what, what do you mean by they going to feel you? Like, is that something that you're going to use as, as fuel to your fire as far as, you know, coming out and showing and proving that, you know, I should have been the first defensive lineman or I should have been the number one pick taken. Like, is that going to fuel you um, as far as, you know, your gameplay on the field? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I mean, it's a it's a blatant decision saying you're not as good as we think you are. <laughs> it's as simple like that. as that. So, uh, you know that that's gonna ride with me. But um, you know, I'm with the Jets now, and and to be quite honest, this ain't even no PR answer. I know, you know, I know they like me a lot and, and they love me, and not just what I do on the field, you know, off the field as a person. You know, they they was trying to trade up for me since pick fifteen, calling every team, every pick, every team, every pick until they're finally able to get me. So you got a team able to do that with you, and that's riding behind you like that. I can't wait. I can't wait to give this team all I got. And that's one hundred percent facts. I talked to Robert Sala like once a week, bro, and I knew I knew he liked you a lot, right? In our yeah. discussions with you, going back to the Senior Bowl, him watching you there, even though he was coaching the other team. He really liked you. And I know for a fact, you know, as you said, sometimes it's PR, you know, we were trying to trade up for him since they legitimately, bro, like really were trying to trade up and get you since pick 15. So I just think it was destiny for you to become a Jet. And I know when you came on your visit, you had sent out a, a Twitter post, right, saying um, it doesn't matter what other people say about me. You know, I, I'm confident in who yeah. I am. Just talk about that, because I think it threw some fans for a loop thinking that maybe you had a bad visit yeah, yeah, when you yeah. came to New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I seen that on Twitter. Some of the Jets fans were like, oh, it didn't go good or whatever. Yeah. It, it was literally the exact opposite of why I kind of tweeted that because how how this organization felt about me, you know, it was kind of some some validity, you know, in, in the sense that like, you know, I, I did, you know, I made the right decision in, in believing in myself and, and my value because I'm not the only one that values myself like this because this organization does. So that's kind of what that tweet was about, man. And I knew it was a kind of misconception. So you know, I actually tried to tweet about it after and be like, nah, 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 it went great. Oh, uh, no, it's out there on Twitter. It's it's it's, it's in pen, yeah, man. I people people are going, you're going to learn this being in New York. I'm going to go ahead and give you some knowledge from my old head. Yes, sir. Once it's out there in Twitter, man, they're going to you know, decipher it how they want to decipher it. <laughs> There's no use of arguing with people on Twitter, man. I've learned that mm -hmm. the hard way too many times. <laughs> so once you put something out there, man, just know it's in pen. And they're going to decipher it how they want to decipher it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but 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 talking about your journey, I know you're real adamant about that. Even in your coat yeah. pocket, I saw that yesterday. You put all the schools you went to. And before I talk about your journey, why do you think you had to go the JUCO route before going to a big school like Georgia? Like what 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 happened where you had to go to the JUCO route before going straight to a, a school like Georgia? Oh, I was just a non-qualifier, bro. That's okay. all it was. Uh, the, my first couple of years of high school, I, I was. I was not handling my business, you know, and I'm a first, I'm a first generation college grad and, you know, I'm the first in my family to do anything like this. So you know, I didn't really, you know, not saying I didn't have enough sense to do good in school, but I wasn't really focused on it like that. But then once I seen the doors opening, I was like, nah, you know, I got to get it together. You know, I got an opportunity to trailblaze for my family, for everybody. You know, I'm a smart kid, you know, everything like that. So, you know, I knew I had to put on not only for myself, but, um, you know, for my family. 
Yeah, that's what's up. Now let's talk about your journey, right? You go from Juco, last chance you, then you go to Georgia, then decide to transfer, you know, bet on yourself, go to Florida State so you can get more playing time. Then you go to the Senior Bowl and then you get drafted by the Jets. Just talk about how this journey and being in so many different places has shaped you and made Jermaine Johnson. Man, it made me uh, it made me fall back on who I truly am. You know, when people are put through hard times, you know, especially playing football, you're gonna fall back for for what you truly are. You know what I'm saying? If if you're not, if you're a coward or, or anything like that, you're gonna fall back to that because you know you are. But if you if you're a fighter, if you got all the resilience, if you're a true competitor, all that stuff comes to light. There's no hiding in football. That's why people go play basketball. <laughs> there's no hiding in football. I like that. <laughs> so, um, there's no hiding, and, and there's definitely no hiding in my journey. You know, I, I, I stood 10 toes, you know, where I was at everywhere. You know, I stared all that in the face. And um, you can talk to all my teammates at any place I was, bro. You know, I'm, I'm a real guy, bro. I'm a real deal. Um, not, not just in how I play, but, you know, as a man, you know, I, I stand on the right principles. So, I mean, just staring and staring all that adversity in the face and, you know, just being able to swallow and be like, all right, let's go. So, I mean, that's kind of what it did for me, and it, it let me find out who Jermaine is. All right, let's talk about some X's and O's, man. To me, you're the best edge defender against the run, right? You play with a different type of physicality. Physicality. To me, you have the heaviest hands in the draft class as far as, you know, putting hands on offensive tackles, and they immediately go backwards. And then you play with such violence as far as getting off blocks. Yeah. Just talk about your thought process against the run, because, you know, when you talk about, you know, edge guys usually mm -hmm. pass rush comes up right nobody really talks about defending the run the Jets struggled last year in defending the run I think we're 32nd in the NFL so I think it bodes well that you're coming to the Jets and you actually put an emphasis in your game against playing against the run just tell me is that just a mindset like what is your mindset with playing against the run because you do it quite well I mean that's that's uh that's just the nature of me man you know I like to get down and dirty I like to earn the right to rush the pass you know, I look good, but I ain't a pretty boy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let them know. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? So, I mean, I like to get down and dirty, and uh, that's just the nature of my game, uh, especially, you know, I'll always revert back to that journey, bro. My journey wasn't wasn't clean. It wasn't a clean cut or anything like that. I had to get dirty, you know, in my journey and get things done, and it's the same for my game. You know, I got to get dirty, you know, and I'll set the tone. And I'll set the tone in the run game. Like, if I get a pulling guard my way, buckle up. <laughs> buckle I up. love that. I you love that. Yeah, let's talk, let's talk about a pass rush a little bit, because as I stated earlier, like you've really ascended into your pass rush game. And, and it's I've seen it grow from the beginning of you know the season. Well, going back to Georgia, honestly, to when you went to Florida State and, and growing from there, it seems like in the beginning of the year, you're more of a long arm guy. And then you started switching it up, hitting guys with spin moves. I've seen reverse spin moves where you spin from inside out. And, and beat guys. I, I saw you use the swipe. I, I've seen you use the quick arm over. Just talk about how throughout the season you progressed and what was it that like the switch flipped, right? From yeah. the beginning of the season towards the end of the season, Miami, where you just dominated yeah. and then going into the senior bowl where you dominated so much that you left after only two practices. Yeah, man, it, it, this was my first, this past year was my first full year, full, full time starting, you know, gig in, in the division one level. So, you know, I, I, here I go, I get the opportunity to be a full time pass rusher. And, you know, the, the best thing about football is there's no better teacher than experience. So being able to experience that at a high level, being a full time starter, 60, 70 plays a game. Um, you know, I got to learn a lot, you know, about it. You, you don't know what you don't know. So being a starter that long. And finally getting into that role, I got to find, you know, find out the nuances and everything there is to be a pass rusher. So that's why as the season went on, I just got better and better and better. And then even when the season ended, I was training. I was getting better, better, better. That's why I did what I did at the Senior Bowl. Um, but like this, I mean, I, I, just being able to be that full-time pass rusher, bro, this, this, this past year. And then now going into the league, knowing what I know, feeling everything I feel. And I'm just excited, bro. I feel like a new car and, I'm, and I can't wait to take it off the lot. Have you talking to Robert Sala specifically about how they plan to use you in his defense? I know he talked about maybe using you as the wide nine. For people that may not know what that is, that's outside the tight end, tilted in, creating, you know, a, a vertical edge in the yeah. run game and then just getting up the field and creating havoc in the pass rush game. Yeah. But have you talked to him specifically on how he will use your skill set? Yeah, I mean, just just look at look at my college tape. And I, I'm best when I affect the quarterback, and that's what he do, plans to do with me. Put me on that edge and let me attack. You know, that's Coach Solid's defense: attack, attack, attack. 
you know, go go wreak havoc. So that's what he plans to do. Put me on that edge. Like you said, that wide nine and have me either set a hard edge and I can't wait till the first tight end get across from me. Set a hard edge on him and then get to the quarterback. Man, I just love your mentality. It kind of reminds me of mine, especially when it comes <laughs> against the run, just the physicality of it. But also I want to dive into something a little bit deeper because yes, sir. I hear you talk about, you know, your faith uh, in the beginning when, when you were sitting in the draft room. Yeah. Um, what What is your why? to the reason you played the game of football, right? Because I can tell there's something there and the reason why you're so passionate about this game. Well, there's always one thing. I love the sport of football and everything it has to offer. You know, there's nothing, there's no sport like it. And there's nothing, there's nothing like it, mainly because you got those brothers that you play with. And the feeling you get when you win games, you get to look around at all them brothers and everything flushes back. Them, them workouts y'all didn't want to do, them extra sprints y'all didn't want to run, and all that comes back. So just because I love the sport of football, and second, because I love my family and how much they do for me and how much they sacrifice. And I want to be a trailblazer. And, you know, I got little brothers that look up to me, man. And then they was crying on draft day, you know, for me. You know, my brothers my brothers don't cry. So, you know, I knew it meant something. And, and, and even all my siblings, you know, they, they look up to me, bro. And I, and I can't keep talking about my family because that's why I'm going to start crying or something. But, I love um, it. This is what this is about. This is a safe so, space for you to come on and, and already, bro. about what you truly want to talk about. But, but that's it, man. That's my family, my support system. That's my why. And, uh, and they, they were a keystone, you know, in, into why this is all possible. So, you know, for them to be there on draft day and, and with the cameras and getting interviewed and stuff, you know, now it's not just me in the limelight. I mean, y'all get to see everything behind the scenes and, you know, all the money and time spent, and all the games that was traveled to and, you know, all the money that could have went to the family. But, you know, they 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 they, they took care of me. You know, that, that, that means everything to me, bro. So I'm, I'm going to pay it back and, and in more ways than just, you know, a materialistic. You know, I'm going to set the way for everybody to come behind me. Last question here, man. Are, are you ready for, for the bright lights of New York? I know we talked about the media and everything, but there's no city like it, man, once you're winning in New York, man. So just well, tell me real quick, are you ready for these big lights in the Big Apple? Look, man, I don't I don't fold under pressure. Mm. It, it, it creates a diamond. Pressure forms diamonds, man. And it, that's what I am. So I, I, love, I love the limelight. I love, I love the pressure. When it's on, I'm going to make a play. You know, that's what I do. So, you know, I'm just excited to bring everything I have to offer to the Jets. And I can't wait till I make that first play and they, and they go crazy, man. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, man. Appreciate you talking to me, man. It was a great interview. Uh, Lige Doosable, I am athlete tonight, talking with my guy, Jermaine Johnson, defensive end from Florida State. The Jets traded back up into the first round to get him. He's going to be a real play playmaker. And at the end of the day, I think this guy has the potential to be the best in drafted in this class, man. Appreciate you for coming on with us, man. Already, man. Appreciate you. Already.